Hey, hey, Alex here from Tactical Arbitrage. Today we're going to talk about Keeper. Keeper is an Amazon product price and sales tracking and historical data extension for Chrome and Firefox, and it's an essential plugin when doing any kind of online or retail arbitrage. With their advanced tracking systems, it's even actually a fantastic extension for the regular Amazon shopper just to receive alerts when price points on something you want falls within your budget. But more on that in a moment. Now once installed, every product on Amazon has a little graph underneath the primary image with a bounty of useful data to help you plan your arbitrage strategy. Learning to read these graphs within a few moments to appraise potential flips for their profitability and time to turn over is paramount to the success of your FBA business. Let's have a closer look. Now at first glance, a keeper graph will appear confusing, but it doesn't have to be. The simplest way to read it is to look at three main things. To look at these three things, we'll unselect all of these little boxes here to make things clearer, and we'll just add back one at a time. Now the first setting we really want to have a look at shows Amazon's price. Now as you can see, Amazon sells this item, this little dinosaur here, for $12.99. Although we can see by going back through the history that in late ooh, November they sold it for $10.39 and that was just for like a day. So what about all these little gaps? Okay, so these gaps are when Amazon has actually run out of their own stock temporarily. Sometimes they restock the items quickly and other times I guess not so much. It's not uncommon though with more popular items to see these gaps appearing, especially during Christmas. Now you can see here, for instance, that after the initial rush dies down, they've been able to stay in stock since. Some products Amazon does not stock at all, ever. And in this case, the market is purely dictated by third-party sellers. It's actually nice to not have to compete with Amazon going in and out of stock. So, identifying these particular products and making them your own is often a good tactic. Okay, the next thing we want to have a look at is this little box here, Marketplace New. Now this shows us what our little dinosaur buddy was selling for by FBA and third party sellers. Now I'm going to zoom in to show just the last month here for a better look. Alright, you'll notice that the blue line matches Amazon's price when they're in stock. Okay, and when Amazon's out of stock, the blue line shows what the dinosaur is selling for at those times. Now, this blue line more so reflects like the lowest selling new price. So when Amazon is in stock, it kind of pulls that line down in the graph. The blue line can, however, go even below the Amazon price if a seller is looking to undercut Amazon to generate a few sales of their own. Now, as you can see here, as the blue line jumps up, the hope that Amazon's going to run out of stock by FBA sellers here is palpable. At some point, the pre-Christmas demand for this product was so high that it sold for as much as $60, with prices of $30 to $40 being pretty standard when Amazon sold out. Okay, moving on. The Marketplace Used Box, we're not going to look at that as much at the moment. It works much the same as the new and is pretty useful if you're selling second-hand books, for instance. Um, not so much second-hand items, that's something that I actually avoid. You may sell second-hand items yourself, it's not really my thing. Used book sales, there's a lot of success stories in that market. Um, if I check out this example over here, you can see here the marketplace used on a book is really active. I mean, not so much in other products. But for now, let's go back to our dinosaur. Okay, now the third thing I really do want to have a look at here is the sales rank. So let's turn off all the other buttons here and just select sales rank. So in October, the Good Dinosaur movie was a long way out, and the rank on the item sat at around 30,000. Then as the marketing machine starts to hype up the movie, the sales rank, you can see it becomes lower and lower. I mean, if you know a movie's coming out in a few months' time, you can kind of anticipate that sales are going to increase, and this, this, these markers here are evidence of that. At the time of this video, for instance, the movie's still at, at the cinemas, and it's sitting around the 3,000 mark. Now we can know from this that sales are thick and fast, although Amazon has the market cornered on this for now, and the price is pretty low, so I wouldn't personally worry about this product. 
but that gives you an indication of how the Keeper Graph works. Let's have a look at an item with a much higher rank and see what we can see regarding the sales rank. Alright, check out this Barbie here. This Barbie's ranked at about 100,000 rank. Now I can see what's happening with this rank graph a lot more clearly. Every time it sells, there's a rank adjustment. It's much more obvious on a higher ranked item to see what's happening. You can see in October there's a few sales here and again here and then it starts to pick up in November and then as quarter four gets into full swing the sales are coming quickly bang 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 and then since Christmas you can see the inevitable slowdown sale 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 reading the sales rank graph can be quite dizzying sometimes it's obvious like in this instance and making a projection on whether to flip 10 items or just sending in the one comes down to how quickly you really want to turn over your stock. Obviously if you're looking to keep items in stock for no more than a few weeks at a time on something like this, if the return on investment was worth it, just a couple on the shelf would be better in my opinion. Especially if you're in the early learning phases of FBA. Buying wide as in buying small amounts of many things instead of buying deep is a much safer approach. Eventually you'll understand rank versus market competition and you'll have your own risk management profit strategies and again Keeper helps us forge this path for our personal requirements. So using Keeper for online arbitrage is really great. You go to one website, you find a product that you like, you go over to Amazon and you check it on Keeper here. You look at the sales history, the number of sellers, price fluctuations and from there you make a calculated decision based on this information. But let's talk for a moment about doing Amazon to Amazon flips and where Keeper comes in very useful for these kind of practices. Now in mid 2015 I sent Keeper a message asking if we could get multiple graphs appearing on a category page so at a glance we could see any interesting opportunities on dozens of products at once. Well, a couple of months ago they advised me that now with the Chrome browser and making an adjustment in the settings here to yes on this setting, show price history graphs as overlays when hovering Amazon products, you can pretty much do the next best thing. So let me go back to a category page for a moment. Okay, so there's dozens of items here. And as I mouse over, there's a graph, there's a graph, graph, graph. So what I'm looking for here particularly are two types of products. Firstly, I'm looking for items where Amazon is normally priced very low and then goes out of stock often, leaving FBA sellers able to set the price much higher, a little bit like in our good dinosaur example. Now the policy on buying from Amazon and selling back to Amazon is at the time of this video along the lines of, you cannot buy the product to resell again if you buy the product using a Prime account to get free shipping to send the item to you. And you cannot buy a Lightning deal to then resell again. So a lot of dispute has been made surrounding whether or not reselling on Amazon can get your account banned. But from communications I've had with Amazon staff and seen in various Facebook groups of similar communications, there really seems to be nothing against the practice as long as it falls within those key guidelines. At any rate, do your own due diligence. So it can be a profitable way to flip stock, even if it does feel kind of strange using one account to ship to yourself when the price is low, only to reship straight back to Amazon to resell with your seller account. Now let's have a look at another popularly tracked item. Okay, this Imaginext Batcopter falls into the highly sought after Amazon flip. As you can see there are currently 223 people tracking it and with a rank of 6,700 toys it's no wonder because even at $49 this, this thing sells like crazy. So if we use this range tool here and zoom into the graph you can see that Amazon does go into stock periodically at $14.99 I mean even this week several times. So. It mustn't be long enough or with enough stock for the 223 trackers to be quick on the draw though because when the alert comes through you can see that if we select more data the history of the number of sellers on this item shows that there's only 20 people selling it. There's a couple of reasons why. The trick when buying flips like this is to know your risks. 
the time that Amazon is in stock for may just be minutes. So what I do is I set Twitter notifications and I link this to an app on my phone. Okay, admittedly that means some late night mid TV purchases or the need to pull the car to the side of the road to see what's been tracked or what's, what's alerted me and is it, is it a worthwhile buy. But sometimes this is like a hundred dollar moment if you play it properly and you're quick on the draw. Okay, the second thing that you need to know about is that sometimes during Amazon's quick restocks, like the, with the Batcopter for instance, they may only allow one per person or two per person. This is a setting that's activated to help non-flippers take advantage of a good price. I mean, sadly, but as it goes, I'm sure many regular customers never even see the better price as the FBA flippers have got all this stuff tracked and they quickly swoop in. The problem with only being able to grab one is that you'd better have something else to go in your shopping cart if you want that free shipping. Now the third thing that you might want to be aware of if you're going to do these Amazon flips is the time that Amazon is in stock from this moment onwards may be months. So look at this toy. Oh. Okay, so I've got 10 of these in stock that I bought at $30 each. Now, if you look back to when I bought it, this little guy was regularly selling at about $80, give or take. And from the moment I got them into stock in FBA, they sat at $30 and stayed there. Now, I took the risk to hold on until Christmas, but as you can see, they're now selling at $15. Okay, list price is $29.99, and I don't want to be paying storage fees forever, so as soon as Amazon puts it back to list price, I'm likely going to clear my stock and take that loss. So the other type of graph I'm looking for here is the product that Amazon usually sells but sometimes dramatically drops prices on for a couple of days. Usually they might do this to price match another website somewhere. If you can find when this happens, it's probably better to buy from that website as you can often stack those with coupons and cashback sites, you know, something Amazon doesn't really have. So let me show you an example. Okay, so once I grab 10 of these pairs of shoes, and you can see here on the graph where I bought them at $16.50, and you can see here that over the next few weeks, I sold them all for $55 each. So, you know, after Amazon's cut, I, I pretty much had a return on investment of around 125% on those shoes, so that was great. Okay, well that's a nice return, but it's not just about being in the right place at the right time. If you can start collecting a list of the ASINs that show these patterns, you can track them all. So, we can use the past information from Keeper to forecast the future, usually very well. Especially when flipping from outside Amazon, buying from one website and then flipping it on Amazon. Now forecasting based on price fluctuations within Amazon itself is an art form that for the most part for me has paid off very well, but that Octonauts example, that's an exception to the rule. And so just be aware. Now if you want to track a product for a price alert, it's, it's easy. And you can be set to be notified as soon as a product goes below a certain buy price. If you just select this tab here and make the adjustments here of the, of the price that you want to be alerted at, and whether it's from Amazon or from a third-party seller. And then you set your method of notification, such as email or Facebook, or as I mentioned before, my favorite is Twitter. Now, going one step further and registering an account at Keeper.com actually ties everything together if you're doing Amazon flips. You get a list of everything you're tracking in an easy-to-read page, and there's also a list of deals that Keeper has identified as dropped in price that day, which can be broken down again into various categories such as toys. Now I've got a certain set of criteria that needs to be met before doing any kind of Amazon to Amazon flips, and at the end of the day, simply put, if the ROI is there, the likelihood of quick turnover at the right price, with a not unreasonable amount of competition, I'll jump on it, just like any deal. So let's return to Amazon and take a closer look at this graph, this extra setting that they now have. Now obviously less competition is better and these graphs are a fascinating look at fluctuations in number of sellers versus different times of the year seasonally. So let's have a look at this laptop bag during the back to school season. The number of sellers just drop right off as they sell out. Now what does this data tell us about a race to the bottom mentality? When there is money on the line and turnover is important, fear plays a really big part in pricing decisions. In an attempt to sell your stock faster than anyone else, 
We enlist the use of reprices and other tools to undercut other sellers by a cent here and a cent there. The reality is that selling the right thing at the right time makes this practice really unnecessary. You can see that 30 sellers here have sold out over the course of a couple of months due to back to school and many of these sellers may have had 4 or 10 items in stock. So we're talking hundreds of bags. A race to the bottom in a case like this should be avoided. Here's another interesting one. At the end of 2015, a toy called Pie Face had everyone scrambling to send in FBA stock. Now as you can see, FBA sellers reached over 700 prior to Christmas. I guess the gamble paid off for a lot of people though. As you can see, Christmas sales cleared out the stock of hundreds of sellers. So this new addition from Keeper is really useful. Price history is great and sales rank history is great. But when you can also watch trends in numbers of sellers shift with the seasons, it just adds to helping you make your sourcing decisions with greater confidence. So in short and in practice, Keeper is not just a very useful extension, it's essential. In practice it ties in directly with your online arbitrage flow. Now in the settings you can decide extra things such as what you'd like to see at a glance, just basically set Keeper up the way you would like to use it, tweak the data to appear how you'd best like to see it, and Keeper's got more things planned. They've got an extension for Safari planned in mid-2016. There's a bevy of other um, upcoming features mentioned in their online exchanges, such as the ability to add alerts when a price goes over a certain amount, the ability to stop tracking a product after a certain date, and there's more whistles and bells always coming. Keeper's really working hard to improve the tool all the time, which is great for us. So you should definitely add this extension to your tactical toolkit to maximize results for your online arbitrage sourcing. I'm Alex, see you next time.